In this tutorial here, we're going to show you how to create an assembly in Autodesk Inventor using the Lego Brick Arcade. So, if we're starting at the home page of Autodesk Inventor, we can go up to New at the top left corner there and click on the little page icon above the word New. And then we want to make sure we're using Metric under our templates here. And then we want to click this under Assembly, we want to click Standard MM. And we can click Create now. Now I brought in and we've got a model space in front of us there. We've got a different menu bar up here, tool bar up here. We have previously, because it's focusing on assembling the parts rather than um, designing and creating them. So you can press place, symbol above the word place. And these are the four parts we want. What we can do is we can click on one and hold shift and click on the top one. Click it to the bottom one, hold the L shift, and click on the top one there. And that's selected all four now. So we can open up all four parts in one go. That just saves us a bit of time. So I just click once and that'll just place them in the assembly. You'll see on the mouse cursor there, they've still got some parts attached. And if we clicked again, we'll get another four parts of what was selected. We won't bother doing that, so we'll just press escape instead. So we've got our four bricks in front of us there. So it's kind of we have an angle, so we're going to rotate that round. I can click the little cube. And I can hold shift and rotate that round so I get a better view of the bricks we have. What I want to do is I'm going to make this brick what we call the ground brick. So it's going to be fixed in the assembly. To do that, I'm going to right click on the, its name, which is 4 by 2 example. And I'm going to go to grounded. That bit brick there is now fixed. All the bricks can be dragged around, but it can't be dragged around anymore. So, what we want to do is we now want to um, attach our bricks to like a, a Lego model. So we're constrained together, so we need to add some constraints. So we're going to add this yellow orange brick to the bottom of this yellow brick there. Up to the top toolbar here, and make sure you've got assembly tab selected. Clicking create constraint there. And you see here we've got two little red ticks, so it's looking us to select a surface on one of the parts and then a surface on a totally different part. So I'm going to click the first selection here, I'm going to select the top of that there, top of the orange brick, and then automatically it jumps to the second selection. I will hold shift and rotate this round, and I want to select that bottom edge of our yellow brick. And you'll see those two bricks, the top surface and the bottom surface of the yellow brick, are now sitting against each other. This is what we call a mate constraint. So we can click apply there. And you'll see once we click apply, we've now got two red ticks here. Again, that means we're working on a new constraint now. So we can select the face of this orange brick here. And we can select the face of this yellow brick here. Now, that's flipped them around, so the orange brick's not below the yellow brick. So what we need to do is we need to change that to a flush constraint. And you'll see that the orange brick now goes under the yellow brick there. Because those two surfaces are flush with each other. And we can click apply there. So we just close our constraint for a second. We can press escape there to create any tools we have selected. And we'll see if we click on a yellow brick, it's fixed because it's a grounded brick. The orange brick you can only move in that axis there from one direction for long. So we need to kind of constrain it so it can no longer move there. Road to constrain an object so it has no freedom. So we're going to click constrain again. And this time we want to have flush constraint again. So click on the end of that brick there. End of the brick. So let's line those two ends up. But we want our orange brick to be in the middle of our under yellow brick. So it's centered. So we can add what we call an offset here. So I'm going to select this here. I can type in 8. And you see that's now moved. Eight along, eight millimeters along, and it's now in the center of our brick. If it's gone the other way for you, you might need to type in negative eight in the offset instead. So we can click apply there, and if we close that there, we'll now see that our orange brick cannot be dragged in any direction. It's fully constrained. So let's go ahead and constrain our green brick. So we'll set the top of the yellow brick here, and the bottom. And they have automatically, the bottom of those 
green brick is now sitting on top of that yellow brick there. We're just going to leave this as a mate constraint. We want those two sitting just like that there. We'll click apply. Next up, we want to have a flush constraint. So we're going to click on flush, click on the little end of that green brick, and on the big face of the yellow brick there. Click apply. We now want to position that green brick over these two studs here. So we're going to click make sure flush is selected, click the end of that green brick, and the end of that yellow brick. And again, we need to add an offset. So offset is going to be 8. We just press tab, it's moved along, and we can click apply again. So that's that green brick now fully constrained. So just the red brick to add now. This time, I want to have a mate constraint, so I'm going to click mate. I'm going to rotate that round so I can see the bottom of my red brick. Click on that there. Click on the top surface of the green brick. It's jumped on top there. And click apply. So now I want to have a flush constraint, so I'm going to click flush. Click on the red surface, the small surface of the red one there. And the larger area surface of the green one. And click apply. And one last one, we're going to click on the small surface of the red one and the small surface of the green one. And we'll click apply there. Now we can close that, that's constrained, and we can view our assembly. We can rotate that round however we want to view different angles of it. And if you notice, if I try to grab any of these here, none of them should move. So you can always test that on your assembly, see if any of your bricks can move. And if they have moved, try to work out how you can constrain them yourself. If it's all good, what I'd recommend going and doing is trying to make an assembly of your own creation. We've got Lego bricks here, so what could you make out of these Lego bricks? Also, don't forget to save your work. If you save as any other file, just got this file, save as, and we can save that as Lego brick assembly wherever you're working. 